the Naked DJs podcast. Are they really naked? We know they expose themselves every day just so they can bring you the best of music. They like to stick it out there for everyone to hear. You can hear their podcast on Anchor.fm, YouTube, and any of your favorite podcast platforms. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by best-selling author and mental health expert, Barry Mikalau. Barry has done gratitude leadership for corporations as well as numerous mental health programs. Barry has an interesting story about how his first book came about, and he specializes in showing people how to define their personal and organizational purpose. So we're going to be talking to Barry about all that he is doing to help his fellow man and community. Barry, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Curtis. It's great to be here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? (laughs) Uh, Well, it all started very strangely for me here in Australia. Uh, uh, The year was 2015, and I felt very despondent with my career. Uh, You know, Curtis, the money was great. I was helping people in the shoe industry here in Australia. But there was a deep sense of unfulfillment in my life. Um, Like a lot of us uh, that go around, you know, with our jobs and and earning a living for our families and and, and helping those in our community. uh, For me, there was this hole, there was this gap inside of me that, that felt that I could do more and I could be more. And it just so happened on a particular day, Uh, I was driving to one of my customers' uh, places of uh, residence and I received a phone call saying, Barry, I'm running late. Can you delay me an hour? And Curtis, uh, we've got this beautiful cemetery in the northwestern suburbs of Sydney, Australia. And the best way to describe what happened next was my car steered itself. It felt like it wasn't me driving. And as I was driving through these beautiful, wide uh, cemetery streets on a beautiful, crisp day, I pulled my car over and I started walking amongst these gravestones. And as you do, you become quite reflective about your own life and about um, what you were up to and the people you were helping and what have you. And I couldn't help but notice the years uh, that people had died. So you start doing the mathematics, you know, how how old people were they when they passed away. And a certain realization came over me about this this deep feeling of uh, I felt like I wasn't living my purpose. I wasn't living what God intended for me to live. So uh, about five minutes into that experience for me, I, I received something that can only be explained as supernatural for me. And I don't really care how it sounds because every word of it is, is, is true for me. I felt three words bombard me, um, not so much uh, through communication dialogue like we are speaking now, but it, it felt like the words were felt. It wasn't necessarily spoken. And those three words were live your life. And I didn't quite understand what that meant because I thought I was living my life. And uh, that led to a chain of events where the book came about. I started writing furiously and the book came about and uh, the rest is history. It, It was an epiphany for me. Because at the end of the day, uh, I believe that certain situations lead you to the right person, the right situation, the right scenario. And then it is up to us to whether we want to take that leap of faith or whether we want to retract back into what we know is familiar. 
Well, let's mm. talk about your first talking event. You, t- you <laughs> said in your bio how it bombed out. Tell us what yeah. happened and why well, and what what lessons did you learn from it? Yeah, just just crazy. So so uh, essentially, I started writing the book. The book became a number one bestseller on Amazon. Um, and based on those books, I was getting speaking engagement opportunities here in Sydney, Australia. And my first engagement, Curtis, uh, I was, I, I received a phone call from the organizational management of the fair that I was going to be speaking at saying, Barry, we've, uh, we've got 100 seats in the room, but we'll have to get in extra seats because it looks like your session has been absolutely sold out. So I thought, well, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> So they uh, they started bringing in empty all, all these seats on top of the hundred seats that were already there, Curtis. And as I stick my head into the room a few minutes before the actual talk, um, expecting to see a full house of people, uh, I look in and all I see is one person sitting in a row of empty seats. And, and to top it all off, uh, he was eating yogurt. And I can tell you the flavor of the yogurt. That's how vivid my memory of it was. Um, and he wasn't even there for me. He was there for a comfortable seat. <laughs> so that was the insult to injury that came about. Um, and I got quite emotional. I got quite angry. I got very um, despondent. I thought, God, you've let you've 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 taken me along this road i've wrote my book the books hit number one in i believe it was six countries and and here i am speaking my truth and 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 hopefully on the path that's been sanctioned by god and and to live the life that that was intended for me to live and you give me one person in the room you know it was very very emotional for me so so just as i was about to walk out the door curtis something said to me stay just just speak to yogurt man and i've called him yogurt man ever since because i'll never forget his face and i start speaking my truth uh, about coming into our own potential and moving past fear and 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 experiencing a new reality of that which our thoughts create you know exciting areas for us to be involved with as human beings and as I start speaking to Yogurt Man, <laughs> uh, three people walk in and sit next to him and another six people walk in and, and another 10 people walked in. And, and by the end of the hour, there was 117 people sitting in the room. Now, I don't necessarily say that to impress anyone. I do say it, though, to impress upon people that the beginning never looks like the end. The beginning is going to look, in some cases, embarrassing. In some cases, you'll have scarcity. In some cases, doubt will creep in. Fear will definitely be there. You'll have friends and families say that you're crazy, that you shouldn't be doing it. You should stick to a safe job. Um, but for those of us that uh, have a higher calling and that listen to that higher calling and take the next right step, uh, it's very, very important that you do so uh, because that next right step will almost always equal you coming out of your shell and living the life that was intended for you to live and then show other people that it's possible for them as well if they can let go of the fear. Well, explain the science behind how thought becomes things. Absolutely. And it's really, really interesting here. Um, So essentially, we talk about in Australia here, I run some workshops and my online course is quite interesting when we talk about this. So what we talk about is everything that exists in the universe today, Curtis, was once a thought. Everything that exists from, from, from the computers that we're speaking on to the mobile phones that we have to, you know, the packaging of the groceries, everything that exists that we see uh, was once a thought in someone's mind. And then that thought made its way to paper and then it to production. And then we see it, we're holding it with our hands. So let's say now that you touch the arm of your partner or your mother or your father and you touch their arm. And you, and you feel the warmth in their arm and you say, they're real, Barry, I can feel them. They're, they're actually a real human being. 
if you take a microscope to matter, so the skin and bone, what you get after you, you actually get cells, right? So you go to the doctor, the doctor will say you've got cells. Inside cells, you have molecules. You go down further still and you have atoms. And then you go down further still into the human body, you've got subatomic particles. Now, if you take an electron microscope down further into the human body, you get these little things called quarks, Q-U-A-R-K-S, quarks. And quarks change just through observation, just, just observing them under an electron microscope, the molecular trucks, structure of quarks change. And then you say, well, what influences quarks? Why do quarks change under a microscope? And the only answer to that is that thought Thought influences quarks, which influences subatomic particles, atoms, molecule cells, and matter. So, so we get to a level. So where we, when we say that thoughts become things, there's no true statement because the science behind it is incredible. Every single thing, Curtis, that you believe or I believe to be true, really ironclad truth, we will experience in our realities. So if you believe that you're worth a certain amount of money, or if you believe that you're worth a good relationship, if you believe in your heart that you're worth these things, then those things will find you. But if you say you believe that you're worthy of it, and you don't really believe it, then, then the mind will pick the doubt. And then you'll experience more doubt. And then you'll come to me and you'll say, well, I told you, Barry, look, it's not real. It's because the mind continually believes uh, either the, the faith that you have or the doubt, and you will experience based on those two things. So it's important to look at scenarios in the world that you, that you admire, people that you might admire, that have accomplished feats, that, that you think, wow, how did they do that? And you keep convincing the mind of it's possible. Look, there it is. It's possible. It's not a made up thing. This person is doing it. So it's important that we consider that if we want to achieve something in our lives, that the, the first thing that has to happen is that you have to believe that it's a possible thing for you. It ha you have to believe that it is a true thing. And from that, the right people, the right circumstances, you yourself work towards it as, as best you can. So will I. But, but it's all about lining up with the feeling of what we want and then working towards that feeling. Yeah. Can you outline the six steps of, of achieving a desired outcome? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the first step in achieving any desired outcome, Curtis, is you actually have to define the desire. So most people don't know what they want. They just say they want to be happy. And that's great, but it's too broad. How will you know when you're happy? You have to, you have to actually define the parameters of what does happy look like for you. The second area is you have to feel the possibility. So feel the possibility. Is it real somewhere else in the world? Does, does someone have what I would like? And if the answer is yes, feel that possibility. The third way is to catch the feeling, Curtis. So to catch the feeling of what would it feel like in your body when this happens in your life? What would that actually feel like? See if you can close your eyes and catch that feeling. The fourth way is, the fourth step is very difficult for a lot of us including me. And the fourth step is to release doubt and toxicity. Many of us have sometimes friends and family that on the surface wish us well, but underneath there's this, there's this uh, feeling of um, uh, them not believing in you to be able to make it or whatever you want. So it's very important that you identify the toxic people in your life. The fifth step is to release the timing. A lot of people get stuck in saying, I want it to happen now. I want the money now. I want the relationship now. I want the holiday now. And, and it's all about doing it right now, right now. When for me and the way, that I, uh, the way that the universe works here is that you put your intention out there and you release its timing because Curtis, it happens with perfect timing for you and perfect timing for me. 
it happens at the perfect time. And the last one is to embrace your new reality, to, um, to get into a situation, Curtis, where now that you've manifested whatever you want to manifest, that you, uh, you start again and you get bigger. Why do you feel like we've been given the gifts of thought, choice, and creativity? Well, I think because we have a life to live that is purposeful and directful. I believe in, listen, in my home, at home, um, we're, we're quite strong believers in Christ. And I believe in my heart of hearts that we have been given thought, creativity, and choice. Both doubt and fear is available to us in equal measure. It's what do we decide to focus on? Whatever we decide to focus on, Curtis, we will expand in our worlds. We will see more of. But you cannot say that you want something to happen while secretly doubting that it ever will. So that's, that's the biggest, uh, I guess, the biggest issue, Curtis, that we're facing is that we don't believe what we want. We don't believe that we're going to get what we want. And, and like we said previously in this podcast, the subconscious mind will show you your beliefs, but it will also show you your doubts. So if you continually doubt that something is possible for you, then the un- you're giving an order to the universe saying, I want more of this, I want more doubt, and you will receive more doubt. And then from that doubt, you will tell me, well, Barry, look, here, here are the examples of why things aren't working out for me. Here, here they are. And then I'll ask you, well, do you believe it's possible? And you'll say to me, yeah, but I've got doubts as well. And that's why we keep having mixed experiences, Curtis, is because we consistently doubt what we want to receive. Mm. In the green room, we were talking and you were telling me how you feel like people have to take a leap of faith in their own potential when they have a calling to do something. Why is that? Well, uh, you get to the end of your life, uh, however long or however short that is. And if you have something inside you that you feel was never exposed to the world, be it a conversation, a, a business, a relationship, something that you feel you contribute to the world, if you die with that song unsung, then regret will definitely ensue. And, and the problem with most of us is, uh, the, the challenge with most of us is that we believe that this calling isn't important, this, this purpose that we all have, this intended direction of what we're good at and how we can help humanity, that for whatever reason, we don't have the time or the money or whatever it is to pursue that when there is nothing more important than for you to be able to sing your song. Like the world needs you, Curtis, and me to sing whatever song was given to us to sing. And if you get to the end of your life with that song unsung, then uh, you're in a situation where you wish you could have a time machine (laughs) and go back and live a life where you were true to yourself, not necessarily true to your environment or what others expect of you. Give those people who are low on energy and need to get out of a funk some tips on how to do so so the best thing we can do if we're and i'm and i'll be the first to admit here i'm in a funk continually because i'm I'm bombarded with a lot of different energies and a lot of different people with a lot of different expectations so i get down so what i use and what's been scientifically proven to work is you've got to find things that you're grateful for uh, at the drop of a hat We have to get much better, and I'm still learning this process because it's very, very hard to do occasionally, but if you can look at the things that you're grateful for, and I'm I'm not talking about material things. I'm not talking about cars and clothes and vacations and houses and all of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying get grassroots with, you know, your legs still work. You know, not everyone in the world has the privilege to walk yet we take it every day for granted, that your nose can smell the salt in the water 
for example, or smell a beautiful chicken dish, a chicken dinner that's coming to us. We can smell it. You know, our tongue can taste over 20, 30, 40, 50 different cuisines. We have the, our body is just amazing. So when you start with gratitude, you start with yourself. You start with, thank you for letting me live another day. Thank you for my body working. Thank you for my legs working. You know, a lot of people didn't wake up today. And, and we did. So there's something still yet for us to do to be able to live a life with purpose and live a life that's intended for us to live. And gratitude is a beautiful way to live. And you know what, Curtis, when you go down this road, you start to be grateful for the challenges because there's something that the challenges will reveal in us that we quite don't yet understand. And once we're through the challenge, we'll have a new appreciation for, for some sort of new knowledge. And that new knowledge will be applied in a situation down the track. So, so in a way, you know, we look at our challenges um, and we look at them like they're bad things when they're, they're, they are our teachers. They're, they are the things that we do not yet know or we do not yet understand that we still have to grasp. And, and unfortunately for a lot of us, uh, we, we steer away from challenges because they're ugly and they're painful and they hurt and they cost us money and they cost us time. And, and it's horrible. But, but if you look at the, the root of a challenge, it's a it's a deeper understanding of love. It's just it's a deeper understanding, Curtis, of who we are and a deeper understanding of God's love. And if we shy away from that, then we don't really grow as people and we don't love deeper as we should. Well, tell us about your book. Tell us the title. Tell us what <laughs> listeners can expect or readers can expect when they read it. Listen, I, I in, 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 in Sydney, the, well, on Amazon, the book is called The 11 Master Secrets to Business Success and Personal Fulfillment. Um, uh, many of us might know wealthy people. I know a lot of wealthy people here in Australia, Curtis, but they, there is an unfulfillment in them. They are not happy people. Um, not all of them. I would say 60 to 70% are just chasing money. And I wanted to find a way where you have, you can intersect the financial independence of getting a job or a career or starting a business and bringing in money to you and your family and your community. And at the same time, have a deep sense of fulfillment um, in doing those things. So I found 11 areas, Curtis, that join uh, or that intersect um, independence for finances and at the same time having a joy for life and having a fulfillment aspect um, from helping other people. Do you have any current projects that you're working on or upcoming projects that people need to know about? Well, you know, we, we're working with some major corporations in Australia and it's interesting, um, you know, the pandemic has been horrible for so many of us but it's given us time to breathe and look and, and try to identify what's important. So we're working with some major Australian corporations in the mental health area to try and get people to, to uncover what's important for them. So people bring their best selves to work because many of us put on faces in front of other people and we don't want to burden others with our problems. Um, but if we're continually carrying around, and this is the work that we're doing in Australia, if we're continually carrying around heavy energy and, and energy that's not been um, uh, worked through, then what, what tends to happen is that it, it, it leaks out of our aura, out of, out of our, out of our uh, body, and then it affects our world around us. So what COVID has definitely brought to light for me and the organizations that I work with um, are, are people coming back to a sense of personal fulfillment in who they are and what they want to do out of this life. So, yeah. And, and, and I will say, Curtis, sorry, I forgot to mention, I've launched an online course from the book. So it's really easy. So people that actually do the online course, uh, you end up having a 60 page blueprint on you, 
on yourself, on, on, on who your friends are and who the toxic people are and, and where you can find your inspiration and where you continually want to be of service to people and how you can be of service to people. So this course for me has come as a direct uh, descendant from the book itself. So it ends up, it ends up being really, really exciting when, when all of us have the ability to, um, to, to have a blueprint on how we can live our best life and how we can help each other grow. Throw out your contact information, tell people how they can get in contact with you and purchase your books and keep up with Absolutely. everything that you're doing. <laughs> so just go to the website barrynicolau.com so www.barry b-a-r-r-y and the surname is n-i-c-o-l-a-o-u.com and you'll see there you can there's a link to the online course you can buy the book and for corporations that want to take advantage of the work we're doing in the mental health space there is a contact us button, please reach out and, and make sure that, you know, as we move forward into this new year, that we, uh, we have the best intentions for those around us and the best intentions for ourselves. And that's a good place to start. Do you have any final thoughts to close it out? <laughs> Just identify the next right move. Um, any, anyone that wants to do something, anyone that wants to achieve, anyone that wants to get over a disease, an illness, a virus, a pandemic, you know, if you've got COVID and you're in a situation where you're suffering, just ask, just say, you know, what's the best way for my body to fight this? How can I, how can I get better? Like identify the next right move. Don't, don't try and look at the whole future as this big ball of wire. It's not that just it's 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 brick on a brick and soon enough you'll have a wall but you can't look at the wall without putting the brick on a brick so just identify the next right brick and and lay that brick as perfectly as you can and then i'd lay the next brick as perfectly as you can just identify that next right move what would that look like and then once you make that move ask the same question again what would be the next right move from here how could i how could I get over there when I'm over here? And as you identify the next right move, Curtis, the, it's it's easy for the mind to process the next right move. It, it's not a lot of brain power to do that. So just identify what that looks like for you. Um, identifying the desire or removing toxic people or giving your accountant a call or ringing a friend that you trust. What would that move look like for you? And from there, keep going don't stop if you have that hunger inside of you it's been it's been given to you for a reason it's been given for you to exploit and to enrich humanity with so so let's make sure that there's not just doom and gloom in the world that we make sure that we shine our light to those so other people can let them know it's okay to shine their light so that they can become all they can be as well it's a beautiful way to live Ladies and gentlemen, BarryNicolau.com. Be sure to check out his website and purchase his book. Also, please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible because there are a lot of people that need it in these times that we're living in and all that we're going through. And Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Barry, thank you so much for jo joining me today and sharing your expertise. Thank you for having me, Curtis. It's been a pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. dream.